Yum, yum. What's up guys, welcome to Screen Pop. Today we're going to show you Vivarium, a 2019 sci-fi mystery and horror film. Since we will be talking about this movie in depth, beware big spoilers flying your way. Cuckoo is a kind of a bird living a parasitic life. About a third of female cuckoos will lay their eggs in the nest of other species. The newborn cuckoos will purposefully push other chicks out of the nest once the eggs hatch. Surrogate mother birds are fed as if they were their own children. Baby cuckoos grow up to be even larger than their surrogate moms by invading into other birds' nests. Similar stories may be found in human civilization as well. Gemma, a kindergarten teacher, watches a girl in the kindergarten sobbing for two deceased little birds one day. Those are two chicks who have been driven out of their nests by young cuckoos. Gemma reassures the girl that it is a natural rule. Tom, her boyfriend, works as a gardener at Gemma's kindergarten. He assists with the burial of the birds in the hopes of making his lover happy. The couple has a card, although neither of them is well compensated. They just have the automobile as a possession. Gemma's partner has put her under a lot of strain. The young couple makes a decision to purchase a home in order to plan for their future. They go to a real estate agent after work one day to inquire about purchasing a home. The real estate office is crammed with strangely similar people, all of whom are greeted with the same fixed grin by the agent. The couple, however, seems uninterested in the suggested properties. The agent insists on showing them around a model home. Gemma and Tom follow the agent to yonder, a vast home estate. When the couple first enters the neighborhood, they are taken aback by the seemingly unending similar greenhouses. They are perplexed by the uniformity of the buildings and lawns. The realtor leads them to the house at number 9, which is completely furnished and ready to greet its new owner. There is even food and beverages in the refrigerator. The agent inquires about their children while showing them around. When Gemma replies to him, no, not yet, he mimics her words strangely. The agent appears to be pleased with the property and enthusiastically promotes it to the couple. He even claims that the couple will be able to live there till they die and be buried together. The couple is offended and leaves him alone to look about the house. They return to find the agent has vanished. The couple decides to depart because of the poor service. They attempt to drive out of the neighborhood, but they are unable to return. There are hundreds of streets in the neighborhood, and they are all the same. They are disappointed to be back at the house number 9 after driving around in circles. They've lost their phone service and are out of gas in the evening, but they can't find anyone. As a result, they'll have to spend the night at the number 9 residence. They still have some food in the fridge, but it is bland. The next morning, the couple chooses to leave this odd location. They discover a ladder in the house. Tom climbs the ladder to the roof in the hopes of getting a bird's eye view of the neighborhood, but he's desperate to see hundreds of identical rooftops. He stretches his eye as far as it will go. Tom and Gemma hurry on foot toward the setting sun, terrified of being stuck here. They continue to climb over the rails but are unable to locate a way out. When night falls, Gemma observes a home with the lights turned on. It implies that there are people living there. The couple dashes over to the house, thrilled with anticipation. They are, however, unhappy to discover that they have returned to the number 9 residence. What's more perplexing is that in front of the house there's a box full of prepackaged food. Someone seems to have treated them like prisoners. To encourage the man hiding behind to come out, Tom gets mad and sets fire to the home, allowing the smoke to send a distress signal. That night, they slept on the road. However, when they wake up the next day, they're shocked to see the house is in great shape and there's another box in front of the door holding a newborn infant with the note, raise the kid and be released. The two are startled by this, yet they must accept the chubby infant as their own. It appears that this is their only option. However, 98 days later, 
The baby has matured into a primary school kid who speaks like an adult and strangely resembles the couple's sounds. They are referred to as mother and father by the boy. They dislike the youngster, though, since he usually puts out eerie cries when he is upset. Tom eventually becomes enraged as their lives here become increasingly monotonous and they are forced to raise a weird son. During their stay in the city, Tom sends messages for help on the roof all the time but no one ever finds them. Every morning a box will appear in front of the residents, bringing their daily necessities to them. They place their life wastes in the box to be collected before the day finishes. Tom sits in the yard with Jama every day because he is bored with his life. They are looking for the person who sends and collects the boxes, but they never see them. The boxes emerge and finish in a split second. Tom's attention is drawn to a little portion of the lawn that has been burnt by a cigarette. He thinks that dirt beneath the grass is unique and that there must be something hidden beneath it. So he begins digging a hole in the garden in the hopes of escaping through the tunnel. Tom's life has altered dramatically since he began digging. During the day, he rushes to eat his lunch before beginning to dig the hole in the garden until the evening. He's become less and less communicative with Gemma. He even sleeps at the bottom of the hole on occasions. It's just another day in the office. Gemma sits on the living room floor watching the crazy youngster rush over and start playing himself. After some time has passed, the youngster turns on the television and begins to watch. The screen is showing strange fractal-like images, yet the youngster is completely fascinated in them. Gemma and Tom spend their rare spare time in the evening sitting in the car together, thankfully with enough electricity to put on the car radio. They've been gone from their world for a long time and are delighted to hear such lovely music, which they can't help but dance to. However, Tom's existence in the house has become an excruciating misery since the weird child constantly screams. After breakfast, the weirdo lets forth another high-pitched scream. Tom can't take it any longer and locks the kid in the car, leaving him to starve on his own. In the confined car, the boy screams and cries for rescue, triggering Gemma's maternal instincts. Despite Tom's objection, she gets the kid out of the automobile and returns him to the room, where she continues to look after him. He's upset about Gemma and his life in general. Tom spends the entire day excavating the hole and hardly ever speaks to Gemma. The couple becomes increasingly estranged from one another. Taking care of the boy is the one thing that makes Gemma's life better. Every day she plays games with them and they enjoy picnics on the grass together, looking at clouds that are all the same form. However, the youngster goes missing one day. Gemma searches for him frantically but is unable to locate him. The youngster returns alone late at night, clutching a book filled with odd patterns and scary phrases. Gemma inquires as to who handed him the book. Acting like a toad monster, the child makes weird noises and inflates his neck sacks. Gemma sobs in despair as she too can't bear it. Another 98 days will soon pass. The youngster has matured into a young man. Gemma is terrified by the weirdo. She sobs to Tom, expressing her remorse that they didn't murder the kid. Tom has gotten too weak to speak or wash himself at this point. He has bruises all over his back. Gemma will have to sort it out on her own. When the freak leaves the house throughout the day, she follows him. But as Tom is working on the tunnel, Jane becomes disoriented. He discovers a body in an underground body bag. Tom crawls out of the hole, he's freaked out and manages to hear Gemma scream for aid. With his voice, he helps Gemma find her way back. The couple eventually finds each other, but the freak locks them out of the house. As a result, they'll have to sleep in the car. Tom feels worse and sicker after days without eating, and he's on the verge of death. When the freak shows up in the middle of the day, Gemma begs him to preserve her boyfriend, but he just says that it is time for Tom to be released. Tom ultimately passes away in Gemma's arms. The freak returns with a package containing another vacuum bag. He stuffs Tom's body inside. Gemma has no choice but to witness the freak toss Tom's body into the pit he made himself. In a moment of rage, she loses her wits and ambushes the freak with a pickaxe. However, she can only inflict minor injuries on the freak, who also emits odd noises. He goes into a maze beneath by opening a roadway as though throwing back a sheet. 
Gemma joins him in the labyrinth. This subterranean realm has taken her by surprise. It's like walking through a colorful haunted mansion, where she sees others living the same horrible existence in the same house with the same weird boy. All of Gemma's familiar scenes play out like a fast-forward movie to her. Eventually, those poor individuals like her will die. Gemma is so unhappy and she falls downstairs and returns to the number 9 residence. Since their arrival in this community, Gemma has finally realized that they have been imprisoned. She'd never felt so helpless before. She shuts her eyes in desperation. The last thing she remembers is the freak placing her body in a fresh vacuum bag and casually stating that women should die after raising their children. With her last ounce of strength, Gemma declares her desire to return home. The freak, on the other hand, replies thrillingly that this is her home and resting place. The freak buries Gemma with Tom and fills the hole when she dies. The hole then vanishes in an instant as if nothing happened. The freak repaints the number 9 house to its original condition after the couple dies. He simply drives out of the neighborhood to the real estate office after filling up the couple's car with gas, where Tom and Gemma used to hang out. The agent who met the couple is waiting for him in the chair, but he appears to be extremely elderly and on the verge of dying. To take over the agent's tasks, the freak obtains the agent's name tag. He then places the corpse of the dying agent in a bag, wraps it up and places it in a drawer. After doing all of this, the freak sits down behind the table, ready to greet his clients as the new agent. As another couple enters the office, the doorbell rings and the new agent rises to greet them. Another narrative appears to have begun. Thanks for watching everyone! Please make sure to give the video a like and subscribe with that bell on to get notified as soon as one of our videos comes out.